Hi everyone, Corey Barker here. Now today I've got a really interesting um, kind of 3D color effect um, that I was playing with the other day. I was experimenting with, with a couple other things and stumbled upon this and it actually looked really, really cool. Um, and again, it demonstrates the how cool it is to have 3D in Photoshop because you can combine it with all the other cool stuff that Photoshop does um, with all the layers and everything like that and create some really interesting effects on top of throwing some 3D in there. Now, I'm starting here with this uh, broken glass explosion background here. It's a really cool stock image I found. And at the time, I didn't really know what I was going to do with it. I just thought it looked cool. Uh, it could be a, an effect or something like that and certainly could use it in a number of different ways. But in this case, we're going to use it as kind of a background effect for our exploding um, letters that we're going to add to it. Now I'm going to start, uh, I've gone ahead and set my text here. And it's just a simple text layer with the um, letters FX here. And I'm using a big, bold letters and you definitely want to use um, really big letters or numbers, whichever you want to use. Don't want to use really long words, so don't use a long name or anything like that because you'll just have a lot of little pieces to deal with, and that just gets to be a nightmare. So uh, in this case, I've just got the two letters. Now, I'm going to go ahead and convert this text layer into a path. So I'm just going to go um, Control-click or right-click right on the layer itself, and then we're just going to go over here and choose Create Work Path from the menu. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer underneath and just give it a black fill. Just, we're basically hiding the background for now because I, I want to see uh, the path. So I'm going to turn off the text layer, and there you can see is the uh, paths that make the shape of the letters. So let's go over to the Paths panel. I'm just going to double-click and save that path right there. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of that one there. So I've got the paths saved. Now what I want to do is add the cracks in this so I can break them apart uh, when I blend it to the explosion. Now to do that, since it's a path, we're going to use to use a path tool. But we're going to use a path tool you probably never used before or don't use very often. And that is the freeform pen tool, which uh, basically allows you to, bas to draw a path freehand. Now it's kind of ironic because the path tool is designed to give you really sturdy straight or, or really you know nice curved lines or something like that something you just couldn't achieve with a freehand um, motion but in this case it does allow you to draw those paths freehand which is good because I want the cracks to have a kind of organic feel to them um, almost like they broke naturally and me freehand drawing it really does tend to give it that effect and you don't necessarily have to be an artist to be able to draw you're just basically drawing jagged lines so just kind of um, here watch what I do here so I'm going to set the um, the tool method up here, the uh, Pathfinder, to subtract from shape. So make sure that is selected. And I'm just going to start right down here in the lower left corner and just start drawing a path. Now I'm just, just purposely kind of keeping it kind of jagged. I'm not trying to keep it straight. And I'm just going to create, going to create almost like a spider look here. I'm just going to go out there. Now you don't want to cross the paths inside the area of the text because then that will bind those letters or those together those areas together when it is converted to 3D so be sure not to do that so I'm just going to branch out another arm here and just bring that down there so so again now you see how it's getting that organic look to it on those areas of the cracks there so we'll just kind of do that here break that one there and then we'll just bring this one over here and then when you get to the original start point, you'll see a little icon pop up, let you know to close the shape, and there you go. Okay, so we've got our uh, spider element there. I'm actually going to move it just a little bit, like right there. I think that looks pretty good. There we go. So you can see in the paths panel that this, because this shape is set to subtract from shape, it's knocking out those areas of the, the letters there. So we're going to go ahead and select all our, our path elements here. And let's jump back to the Layers panel and go ahead and create a new blank layer. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, press Shift-Delete. And we're going to do 50% gray, normal, 100%. There we go. Now, once you have your layer filled and the path selected, go under the 3D menu and go down here and choose New 3D Extrusion from Selected Path. Now, you can see it goes ahead and creates the extrusion like it would normally. And you can see it's cut out those areas where we've created those crack elements there. Now, I'm actually going to undo that because I want to do this one area here feels a little bit empty so let's just add to that and this will be good so you can see how you can go ahead and be doing this. So I'm going to select that one shape there actually let's go ahead and draw the element. I always find it easier to do this. Let's just draw this 
from inside here. And just kind of draw that in there. So I'm going to select both of those elements and let's go ahead and combine them together. And then once again, set it to subtract from shape. So what we did here was combine these two, the new elements, and then just reset it to subtract from shape. Now you'll notice they are still both separate elements there, but you can go and select them both and still go under here and choose merge shape components here and then it will fuse them together. There you go. All right. So now let's go back to where we were. Um, our gray filled layer, select the paths, new 3D extrusion from selected path. There we go. All right. So I'm going to rotate this a little bit and let's adjust the extrusion depth. So I'm going to open up properties panel. Now when I move the angle here, I move the camera view, which is the, you know, turning of the camera right there. So I can see the uh, sides here. Now with layer two selected in the 3D panel, which is this layer, um, you'll see the extrusion depth um, slider here in the properties panel. So I'm just going to dial that down to a smaller setting there. Let's do around 75. I think will be good. And let's go ahead and bring this back to the front face view here. I'm also going to add a bevel to this text as well. So let's go ahead and select that text item again, or that shape item. And then in the properties panel, you're going to click on the third tab at the top here. And right down here, you're going to see the bevel settings. So just go ahead and enter 10 for this. Now, also, I want to make sure it does it to both sides. So go up here in the sides menu and just choose front and back. And there we go. Okay. Now, before we split up the elements here, I want to make sure we apply some surface properties to these uh, to the letters here. So under the layer two, we're going to first select the first item up here, which is layer two front inflation. You're going to go over here into the shine and reflection settings in the properties panel. Bring the shine to zero and just push the reflection to around 25. Do that for all sides. Let's go ahead and just do this. In fact, you really only need to do it for the front facing sides. That'd be the, uh, the, the extrusion, the bevel, and the front face. Other oh, elements that really need it. But I'm going to go ahead and do it, all of them just in case we get a little too excited moving the elements around later. So again, setting the shine to zero and the reflection to around 25. Okay. <clears throat> so our letters are all set. We're good to go. Um, one thing I've gotten into habit of doing whenever I'm doing 3D and then I get to a point where I'm going to change the 3D where I can no longer edit it any further, it might be a good idea to make a duplicate of that 3D layer. So I'm just going to press Command J and just turn that layer off for the moment. And let's just position it down here. All right, so we're back to the, the original. Okay. So let's turn back on, oh, let's turn off the, um, the black filled layer so we can see the explosion background here. Now another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of that original exploding glass background layer. So here in the layers panel, this goes down to the bottom here. So there's that background layer. I'm gonna press Command J and make a duplicate and drag that duplicate above the 3D text. You'll see it really basically disappears. Now I'm also gonna rotate this 180 degrees. So I'm just gonna go ahead under the edit menu, go to hit transform and choose rotate 180. And then we're gonna change the blend mode of this layer to screen so it blends in with the text there. Now I want to clip this inside of the 3D layer, so I'm going to press Option Command G, and now that screened exploding glass layer is only visible inside the text, as you can see right there. Now the 3D text itself, reselect that layer, and then you're going to go to the 3D menu and go under, go down here to the near bottom, and choose this item right here, Split Extrusion. Now what that's going to do is break apart these individual elements into smaller, more manageable sizes. So now I can grab them and use the 3D tools to move them around and really position them as if they were blown out by this explosion. So, And if you're not familiar with the 3D tools, this is a good chance to practice on these individual items. Notice I'm just selecting um, the different tools here in the, in the options bar and it's allowing me to rotate it. I can push it up slide it back and forth in 3D space, you know. So you can not, not only move them around in the sense that they're exploding in this area, but you can move them closer to you or further away from you, depending on 
we'll go ahead and use a fancy word, their trajectory. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm just moving this element here. Now, this is about where I got to the point where I was experimenting, and I'm like, all right, um, it's pretty cool, but it's just not that appealing. I mean, it's, it's a cool effect going on, but it wasn't that appealing to look at. And I'm like, what if I did some cool coloring effects? Now, this is the reason that the text I made gray, because I'm going to put a, an adjustment layer here. It's going to really do an interesting effect to it. So bring back up your layers panel. Here we go. Um, select the topmost layer, which is that layer that's clipped inside of this uh, layer here. You're going to go to the adjustment layer menu, and you're going to go down here to gradient map. Now, when the gradient map, pa uh, gradient map panel comes up, click on the gradient, and you're going to go in here, and you're going to see all these presets in here. Now, if you don't see these presets, just click on this little gear up here, and then choose uh, from these many ones to experiment with. But the one we're going to be using is, is this one called Spectrums. And when I click on this little rainbow element here, watch what happens. Really cool. So we'll go ahead and use that one for the moment. So this is the color effect that we're getting on here. Now, I can still go in here and manipulate this 3D layer by moving it around. You'll see that interesting effect we're getting there. Now, you see that shadow that's being cast on the ground plane there? That's a tad bit annoying. So I am going to go ahead and take care of that by selecting the environment property, the 3D panel. And then right down here, you're going to see the ground plane settings. Now, I noticed that I get a bit of a moray when I put this to zero. I get a bit of a, a little more a pattern on the object. So we're going to actually set it to one. Now I'm noticing it might be a little bit of a bug. It may do it this time. If I hit one and hit press enter, it goes to zero. Not entirely sure why it does that. But if I hit two, it goes to one. So, hey, if you want 1%, press 2%. I'm not sure why it does that, but that is the case there. All right. So back to my 3D object. I'm just going to move this around a little bit here. And you can see as I move it around, the reflection, reflection properties we added are reacting and all that stuff too. Now we can also modify that with the lighting, which we will do in just a moment. But first, let's position that there. Now, back in my layers panel, I'm going to reselect the original background layer, do a Command A and select all, and then Command C to copy that to the clipboard. I'm going to jump back over to my 3D layer. In that environment property, in that uh, same where we just adjusted the ground plane shadow, up here at the top, you're going to see this IBL setting. Go in here and just choose new texture and just make a thousand by thousand pixel texture there. It automatically fills it with white, so you're going to see a little color shift on your image there. But just go back in there and choose edit texture, paste that explosion image in there, and let's position that right here. Close that, save the changes, and now you've got this rather interesting reflection effect in the text there using the same explosion texture there. Isn't that pretty cool? Now, lighting. So we, we've just um, changed our, in, our image-based light, but now we have the main light, which is an infinite light by default. But if you go in here and experiment by changing the type of light it is. So, so notice in here, it's the third, it's actually the last tab in the 3D panel here. And I've got infinite light selected. If you go into the properties panel, you can actually change it to a point or spotlight. So what I like is actually the point light. I'm going to select that. And that's just basically a small wireframe ball and just light emanates from the, its center and goes in all directions. So I can move this in three dimensional space. And as I move it behind the object, notice the shadow effect I'm getting on that element. So really I'm just putting this this light right there in the center of the explosion. And look at that cool effect I'm getting there. Now I can continue, of course, to go in here and maneuver or manipulate these 3D objects. And as you maneuver them around, so I'm sliding that one back, let's actually rotate it. So notice the interesting color effects I get on these objects when I just simply rotate them around in all sorts of directions. Pretty cool. So again, this is using various elements of Photoshop along with 3D. When you think of 3D as just being able to create three-dimensional objects that you can 
manipulate with color effects like this through layers, then you're starting to see a whole different way of looking at it. Now we've completely lost what this word said at this point. We don't know, but um, we are having some fun with uh, with this effect here. Now one th one more thing I can do here. Uh, I'm going to jump back over to my lights. Where are they? There's my 3D panel. Let's go back to the lights. Let's add a second point light here. Um, oh, new point light. There we go. And I'm going to drop the intensity of it to 50%. And notice the intensity of the light on those gray objects through this adjustment layer gives you some really, really freaky psychedelic colors. Um, so I'm just going to actually maneuver this over here to the side. So it gives me a little bit more interesting color effect there. I'm gonna, and at this point, this is where I would just pretty much experiment with different positioning and just different elements like that. And just try different things and see what kind of different effects you can get. Now, over back over in the layers panel. Oh. Actually slide that over there just a little bit more. There we go. Now, back in the layers panel there, where was I? There we are. I'm going to go and reselect. The, remember this explosion layer we've got clipped inside? It's still at 100%. Let's drop that to like 50%, make it a little bit less intense. And then also, I'm going to create a new blank layer above that explosion layer, but underneath that adjustment layer. And I'm just going to grab a simple gradient. Let's, let's use a foreground to transparent gradient, and I'm going to set the gradient foreground color to a middle gray. And I'm just going to draw out a gradient from the center there. Let's go a little bit darker. No, no, actually lighter. Just to kind of add a little something to the explosion in the center there. There we go. And that looks pretty good. So now you're just at a point of tweaking things. So again, I'm going to go back here and just tweak this light here. The second light I created, I'm actually going to drop that intensity down to 25%, make it a little bit less intense. There we go. And again, don't forget, you can move around that image-based light and have different color effects appear on the shapes, just like that. There we go, like that. And then once you're all set, or if you want to get a good idea of how it's going to look, you can just do a render. Just go to the 3D menu. Make sure the 3D layer is selected, of course. Go to 3D and then just choose... Render, render 3D layer. And it's going to go ahead and render that. You're going to get the rendered ref reflections and everything like that. But again, something really cool to think about when you're playing around with 3D and color effects. Layer color effects can give you something really interesting here. Now, of course, I did this with just a couple of letters, which is completely obliterated at this point. You could, But you could, get, you could definitely move them around a little less if you still wanted the words to, to actually be legible. But again, it's just another interesting way of looking at a simple... Um, stock image and another way of looking at 3D interacting with layers here in Photoshop. Now, be sure to check in if you haven't signed up over at photoshopmastereffects.com for the updates. The site's going to be uh, launching on March 11th. So if you haven't signed up for the updates and find out um, when now that's going to happen, be sure to do that over again over at photoshopmastereffects.com. We'll see you guys soon.